No way. You're nothing to me, dude. Come on, homeboy. You game banging. You sitting there game banging in your neighborhood. Nigga, I'm international, motherfucker. Getting money. I'm a gangster, nigga. You a game banger. Two different levels, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? We get money over there on our side of town. So, I'm never be scared of you, Mob Jane. Never. You know what I'm saying? You probably got my little bitty homeboy scared of you, but I'd never be scared of you. I'm older than you. I've been doing this shit way before you, dude. You say, I, I watched your little interview. You said you got sentenced to two years. Oh, boy, you couldn't come up in the, behind the walls back when I was behind the walls. Nigga, throw you head first over the tier, man. And uh, at the beginning, I was wondering, like, where is this shit coming from? So when you have a, a paid attorney, your paid attorney is going to tell you, you know. And so I was wondering, like, where is this shit coming from? So when you have a, a paid attorney, your paid attorney is going to tell you, you know. It's all it's all in the paperwork, too, where a judge kicked James out the court and told him who he was, you know what I mean? <laughs> That was some clothes, man, but that was the day that shit hurt me, man, for real. So when he took the stand, take me through that. Well, well, basically, you know how it go. They call your name and you come across them double doors. You you hold your hand up, swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. But, you know, uh, I was facing like five charges out of that case, man. You know, uh, every time I went to court, my brother couldn't even look at me, you know. He couldn't, he couldn't even look at me, you know. Even on my uh, uh, time to read my verdict, they didn't even come back into the courtroom. You know, just to show you how good God is, I pled guilty in that case. I pled guilty. But the jurors, the jurors in my case found me innocent on all five charges. Now, how do that happen? That was God all day long. I told my attorney he wasn't, you know what I mean? It wasn't the attorney because he wasn't really working for me. He was had a crush on the DA, you know, and she was after me. I guess she was going a little too hard on me, you know, for her to lose this case, you know, because all jurors said not guilty. Because like, you know, my son, he had was touched a little girl. The little girl told on him, he got suspended. I talked to him about it. And um, the following week, when I took him back to school, he did it again. So I had to tell him, man, we don't do this. You know, this, this will mess your whole record up. So I, I, I whooped him and my brother called the police. You know what I mean? My son even said it in the courtroom, you know, that's, that's him and her trying to turn me against my dad. So I, I, after that, I was stunned. You know, I was like, okay, what do I do? I just kicked back and prayed on it. And sure enough, I have five not guilty. That's what I'm saying right now today, you know, to James, if he ever watched this video, you know, man, I still love you. You know, you're my brother, but I can't deal with you until you apologize. You know what I'm saying? You know, my mother came to me in a dream and told me to give my brother a hug. So that's what I'm gonna do, you know, whenever I do see him. Yeah, that's heartbreaking, man. So when he took the stand on you, he wouldn't even look at you? No, he wouldn't look at me not one time. Not to every every court appearance I had, he, he could never look at me. You know, he was saying that he came to court because my mother asked him to. That's not true. That's not true at all. You know, when 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 they rearranged my court dates and different sh set me back, he was in the hallway so to the DAs. Not my attorney. You know, so I had been to where it was all coming from once my paid attorney told me. You know what I mean? Cause I didn't only appeared in court one time with a public defender and that was the beginning. So when I came back to court, I had a private attorney. James, if you pay me back for this attorney, I'll be cool with you. <laughs> Terrible man. So where do you think his motivation came from for him to do something like that? I don't, I don't know where it come from. I don't know if it was his animosity or it's, it's jealousy. I'm not sure. It's just, I, I, I could never figure it out because this is my brother. And I was wondering and wondering, you know, it was real confusing far as me trying to figure it out and I I don't know I don't know if it was the ambition I had growing up or you know the, the females he liked it liked me I don't know what it was you know it was just me, me and my brother been through a whole lot and my at the, at the age after I graduated sixth grade my brother shot me you know what I mean <laughs> he, he didn't mean it you know but at the same time being older and call yourself being responsible See what happened, me, me and my partner across the street, my brother had some, some guns and stashed in the yard in the bag. And I went back there, got the bag, 
we took the guns across the street and my partner his mom's had a gun that matched it so we took the bullets out of her gun and put them in those guns and was outside popping at the light james james came out screaming my name then we took off running he chased my, my buddy caught him got the gun from him then he came looking for me i was in some bushes and I, as he was walking past me i started laughing and he said freeze but when i start to stand up out of the bushes his gun went off hit me in my nose you know knocked my tooth out no uh, i jumped up and ran across the street screaming for my mother james ran off you know we've been through so much man i don't know why my brother turned out the way he was with me and bunch you know because ain't nothing in the world me and Buntry wouldn't do for James, you know. Growing up, everybody used to be able to drink, but I couldn't drink really because I had to watch James because he drank too much and be innocent, you know. So I really didn't drink too much. But other than that, I don't know the reasons why he had all this animosity or just didn't like me for some strange reason. I don't know. Heartbreaking, man. And you said that he liked some of your baby moms? I know. That's why I was saying, I don't know if it was behind the females that he was liking, turn out liking me and having babies by me or whatever. I don't know what it was, you know, because he used to tell on me with some of my chicks too. <laughs> like, oh, I just, he just left. Or he, he might, he might call one chick, this other chick name or some shit. They'd be like, who is this? Who is this? You know, James was just being James. I, I believe truly, um, he was spoiled. He was, he was my mama baby. He was the boy in the family to get away with everything, you know. Just me sitting right here listening to you, man. You really sound hurt, man. Man, that's one of the coldest feelings ever. You know what I mean? You know, that 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 feeling. And then right after that, when I won the case, because I sat in jail for like 13 months right in that case. And um, right when I, I got out, maybe a month and a half, two months, my mom died. So it kind of it kind of rocked my world at that moment. You know what I mean? But I'm bouncing back, man. Those were some real painful feelings. Something I never thought I would, you know, encounter. And have you ever confronted him about it? Well, as far as this last episode, I only seen him one time um, in Las Vegas. I seen him on a motorcycle run, you know. Uh, I just, I, I looked at him and acted like I didn't even notice him. I didn't, I didn't even see him, like, you know. And, uh, a little while after that is when I had the dream about my mom telling me to hug him and forgive him, you know. So I'm waiting to see him. The next time I see him, I'm going to do that. But it, it really hurt me. Speaking of your mom, how did she feel about it? Was she in agreement with it or was she against it? Well, you know how mothers be behind their son, you know. That's why she used to always tell me, just forgive him. No matter what, just forgive him, you know. So that's all i'm aiming at you know i've been i've been praying for it the strength to do that you know i ain't ashamed to say i still pray man because prayers do work when you believe in them though you got to believe it. so that's all i do i just pray to see him so i can i can do what she asked me to and after that he, he can continue doing what he do yeah that's terrible man so before we move on right do you consider that snitching or no come on man you know the code yes Yes, yes. You know, do I got to get the uh, the paperwork? <laughs> listen, listen. It happened. Peace and blessings to the tribe, y'all. I am watching the Olympics right now, um, but I had to bring y'all this premium black news. You know what I'm saying, remember they said and I was speaking on it. It's a telescope, I'm not watching the telescope channel. And um, today we have no other than Timmy Rue, man. Mom James' brother saying that, you know, he snitched and, you know what I'm saying, how he felt about Mom James snitching and what it was like, you know, um, even said that, you know, Mom James even shot him in the face and stuff like that when they were younger or whatever. Um, I believe that story was also on Art of Dialogue, but. 
um, I don't know if it was taken down or whatever. It was like maybe two days ago I seen the interview and it was his response to Timmy Rue. And he was saying that he didn't snitch on Timmy Rue. And if he would have never did what he did, then Timmy Rue would be doing the rest of his life, you know, in prison. And he wouldn't be here right now with us today. Timmy Rue said he just wanted to hug him when he see him. He had a dream from his mama. His mama said, hug your brother. So he said when he see him, you know, he just want to get a sorry from him. But until then, he, he want to just give him a hug. You know, he just want to give him a hug, whatever that mean. I mean, I don't know if he's subliminally saying a hug or if you're talking about something else. I don't know, man. You know how nowadays it is, man. But I thought it was kind of crazy, too, that Mob James got on there and was like, you know, um, he did that for his brother on good and he saved his brother and stuff like that, you know. Um, a lot of people didn't know that Mob James had done right and did what he did. But nevertheless, check out Keefe D. I mean, I guess you got a rat calling a, a, another rat a rat, or the pot calling the Keller back, whatever you want to call it, man. But a lot of people said that, you know, Keefe D ratted, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, I mean, if Mob James did rat, who is it for Keefe D to even care about it? But, you know, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to let y'all hear this clip. And y'all tell me what y'all think about this, man. Check this out right here, man. Remember, they said it, now we speaking on it. I'm Mr. Telescope, now I'm watching Telescope Channel. Y'all check out this news right here, man. Telescope. Go. What do you feel about the paperwork that came out a few months ago regarding Mob James? where, you know, the paperwork shows that Mob James snitched on somebody named LG from Cross Atlantic. Oh, back in uh, 2005, I was in MDC. It's called Metropolitan Detention Center. It's a, it's a federal uh, holding center, you know, for free trial, downtown LA. I was down there uh, doing a violation. And uh, that's, that was going all through the building. You know what I'm saying? The reason I never brought it up, because it ain't my, my fucking business. But that's all that was going through the building. That Mob James set people up. He did some shit in Las Vegas, this and this and that, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, his co-defendants was in there, and, and his enemies was in there. George and uh, uh, Boulevard Rob, both of them was in there. I used to talk to them through the vents and all that shit. They was, but his name was popping up in there, he was saying he was snitching and all this old shit. I been knew that shit, though, but it ain't none of my fucking business, you know what I'm saying? I been knew that I was in the MDC when he did that shit. And as of him saying, uh, I'm a buster, I was scared to come up there, the police was up there, yeah, the police was up there because you was there, motherfucker. Yeah. Ah, damn. And I'm, I'll never be scared of you, Mob James. Never in my life be scared of you. You're younger than me, dude. You know what I'm saying? You're not no fucking uh, Bo Peep or no motherfucking uh, Stanley Pitts, Danny Pitts and them, dude. You know what I'm saying? You ain't none of them, dude. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, your brother ain't even the motherfucking uh, the original motherfucking country, Buntry. You know what I'm saying? The original Buntry. I, I know him. He's 67 years old, nigga. He the one put in that work for that name, dude. I know him, you know what I'm saying? I know the history. I, I was I was over been in Compton way before you do. I know more about your hood than you know about your hood. Back in like 1971, I was coming from the Savons and the Sears down there. And we rolling uh we rolling up Long Beach Boulevard, me and my little brother, me and my brothers and little brothers and shit and uh my homies. We little kids, eight, nine years old. You know, all your big homeboys, all the big pyro dudes from uh, Ludus Park. The mob wasn't even out back then. It was Ludus Park and Am. Bartenders, little George. Herman Jr., Willie T socked me in the nose, took my little bike shit. So I, I never liked the, the, the pirates, you know what I'm saying? They was bullies, they took my bike. I'm eight years old, you know what I'm saying? Punk ass niggas took my bike. I never forgot that, you know what I'm saying? And your brother, uh, the real country, was there. This dude like 67 years old, dude. You know what I'm saying? I used to go to Ludus Park back in 68, before Pyro even came out, dude. My brother used to play a uh, little league basketball up there and shit. I was five years old. They used to have a big slide. You know what I'm saying? That shit was still kind of literally white. Ludus Park was, dude. So, you know, I know more history about this shit than you do, dog. Y'all you, you, moved out here in the, in the 70s, mid-70s or something, dude. You know what I'm saying? And as far as me being scared, you, I stayed on the same street as you. Your little brother and them all of them used to come and see my cars. Them some nice-ass cars. Ooh, ooh, that's a Cadillac. Ooh, that low rider. You know what I'm saying? I had like six whips. Lived on your street, dude. Don't kill him, man. Uh, I, I'll tell you, I know what's, what I'm talking about. They had a little gambling place right down the street. Old man Willie. Then down on the, on the, on the uh, fucking uh, corner sack right there, this dude named Ken, he was balling, had a fixed up nice ass house. Then across the street from you on that fucking corner, come going into, uh, in the ward, was Cedric McGill. He owned that corner house right across the street from y'all, dog. 
Come on, man, I'm not scared of you, homie. You young to me, dude. I went to the pen fucking 83. Why are you still up fucking in high school, dude? Come on, man. I'm not fucking scared of you. You couldn't come up in the, you couldn't come up in that pen uh, back in 83. Yeah, throw you over the tier, dude. Head first, man. Come on, homeboy. You couldn't come up in there, dude. You know what I'm saying? So knock it the fuck up. I'll never be scared of you, Bob Jane. No way. You're nothing to me, dude. Come on, boy. You game banging. You sitting there game banging in your neighborhood, nigga. I'm international, motherfucker. Getting money. I'm a gangster, nigga. You a game banger. Two different levels, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? We get money over there on our side of town. So, I'm never be scared of you, Bob Jane. Never. You know what I'm saying? You probably got my little bitty homeboy scared of you, but I'd never be scared of you. I'm older than you. I've been doing this shit way before you, dude. You say, I, I watched your little interview. You said you got sentenced in two years. Oh, boy, you couldn't come up in the, behind the walls back when I was behind the walls. Niggas throw you head first over the tier, man. They had monsters in there, dude. Gorillas, there was only eight prisons in there. When I went to prison, dude. So knock that fuck off. I'll never be scared of you. So you can kill that shit. Yeah, and, but I knew about, but they said they, the whole building was lit up. MDC 2005, the mob chain snitching. Woo, 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 mob chain snitching. I'm like, damn. They talking to uh, one of your number one enemies, Boulevard Rod, talking me through, through the vent. Yeah. So, man, knock it the fuck off, man. I'll never be scared of you, dude. You know, shit. You're a kid to me, dude. It's you and this me. Two different levels, motherfucker. There's levels to this shit. Oh, boy. You a gangbang. You stay in your neighborhood. You say it yourself. <laughs> and uh, I heard another thing you said I need to correct you on. Y'all talking about y'all went up there press easy for this and this and that, man. Yeah, I ain't press no fucking easy, man. Knock the fuck up. They offered easy to death row fucking a uh, CEO before anybody. He turned that shit down, dude. Harry on them offered him that first. So that's you can kill that shit that he uh that he uh scared of sugar and he they took Dr. Dre and all that bullshit, man. Knock the fuck off. They offered Do death row to Easy E first, and he turned it down. He said, "I'm oh, man, I'm already established, keep it deep. I did the conference call for him. Easy, he turned that shit down, dude." You think you think the uh, you think Southside, Kelly Park, or fucking uh, In Hood, Atlantic Drive, or Nutty Block, they'll scoop down there and let you do that shit, man. Let you and show them. Come on, man. Knock it the fuck off, man. We had gorillas and monsters over there where we live. Who lions, tigers, bad motherfuckers, motherfuckers. So knock it off. Yeah. Back in the 70s, I'm gonna give y'all y'all props. I think y'all weren't even living out there. Like 71, 72, 73, when the boys took my bike. Yeah, y'all had a lot of big homeboys. And they was all, uh, you know, I was scared of them. Cause I was eight years old. Both of be scared of them, motherfucker. I know your homeboy, Big Danny Pitts. Cause I was uh, the ball boy for Compton College. He played basketball in 72. Been on the pit boys. You not the pit boys, man. I'm not scared of you, dude. Come on, homeboy. Knock the fuck off. I lived on your street. Last time I'm saying this, dude. Yeah. So the rumor about um, Marble James being a snitch, that was going around since 2005. 2005, when I was in MDC. I, I never said nothing about it. Cause it ain't none of my fucking business. They, 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 that, that was going around. You know what I'm saying? That was going around the whole fucking building, dude. And that shit go like a wildfire. Dude. So, family, there you have it, man. You have it. Keefy D has spoke on your boy Mob James or your rap Mob James, whatever you want to call him. I don't make me you know, you know what I'm saying? Like the nigga Kodak said, man, he ain't my rat, that's y'all rat, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't dealing with it. But nevertheless, y'all jump in the comment section and tell me what y'all think about this commentary, man. I'm still over here watching the Olympics and I'm actually watching breaking. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't believe they put hip hop in the Olympics, bro. That's crazy. Hip hop has came so far. And it's not really off the topic because we're talking about Keefy D and Mob James, which you know, Tupac and Shug Knight. You know what I'm saying? Um, the, the whole Diddy thing or whatever. So it's definitely still hip hop. And it's crazy I'm watching Breaking on the Olympics right now as we speak. So hip hop has changed a lot of lives. It's come far as hell in the past, I believe, what, 50 some years? 50 years of hip hop? But, man, y'all tell me what y'all think about um, what uh, your boy Keefy D was saying about Mob James. And that actually was two years ago, man. I'm talking about he was going off and going in. He was not sparing Mob James at all, man. He wasn't cutting him no slack, man. You know what I'm saying? As they say in um, in California, man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what have you said, man? Uh, what, what do you say? Uh, what the nigga... What the nigga um, Oh yeah, that's what they said. That's what the nigga say from Friday, nigga Smokey. Stall him out, Debo. Stall him out, man. Stall him out. <laughs> like he wasn't stalling him out at all, cuz for real. But you know, nevertheless, man, y'all tell me what y'all think about the commentary and what the boys had to say about each other. 
in the comment section. Y'all tell me what y'all think. And make sure y'all hit that like button. I make sure y'all hit the notification bell. And I got some more videos coming for y'all soon, man. I, pr I appreciate y'all coming to watch. Peace and bless to the tribe, man. Y'all been dropping some funny ass comments in there, so keep on commenting, bro. Keep on coming. I'll be laughing at some y'all comments. Make it my day. You know what I'm saying? Some of them be having me thinking. They got be having some good talking points too. So I see that the people that's following the channel, we all like minded. So peace and bless to the tribe. Y'all like, share, and subscribe. Remember, man, they said it now. We speaking on it. We ain't say nothing. They said it now. We speaking on it. So y'all jump in the comment section, bro. You know what I'm saying? They said it now. We speaking on it. I'm Mr. Telescope, and you are now watching Telescope Channel. Telescope. Come.